Okay, so yeah, this is going to be like module uh, five and six. Uh, I think four is also included, but probably you have already uh, seen those things uh, for your preparation of the midterm exam. So I'm not gonna talk about those, but in case like you have questions, you may uh, you may actually talk about it, but we, it's good if we can um, do that in some other session, maybe the next tutorial, you have one last tutorial with me. Okay, so drift current density. I will quickly go over this one. Some of you probably already aware of these terms and the formulas, and some of you probably have problems with these uh, key formulas we are using. We know like the, there are two different things happening, like the drift, and drift happens because of the electric field, okay? And the, like the uh, carriers, they're moving under the effect of the electric field. That's uh, the velocity associated with, is, will, it will be the drift velocity and then the current drift current density. And for the current density, you know the units, it's the current per unit, the area, okay? And um, for the, uh, the other one, the other one is of course the diffusion and the diffusion happening because of the concentration gradient, okay? So, well, the formula for the drift current density, you, you have this formula uh, in your book, you have already studied this. So mu n, what is mu n? It's the mobility. And mobil what, what mobility tells you? Mobility tells you how fast a carrier moves under the effect of the electric field, okay? So it is actually the velocity divided by that electric field, okay? So the drift velocity divided by electric field. We will talk about that um, like this mobility, when you measure this mobility and you actually considering the low electric field, okay? And then there's mu P, of course, for the holes, same thing. And you know the N and P, the concentrations, E, electric field, okay? And that actually means like, if for example, you have um, an extrinsic semiconductor where it is just P type, so you may ignore the, this term, okay? And if it's n-type, you may ignore this term, okay? So depending upon the uh, constraints given, you may actually change, uh, or you may actually modify this, okay? So then there is the thing that mobility dependence on temperature. Well, there are two um, different things here that we will talk about why I'm talking about this. You might get a small question like asking about this thing. Uh, on your exam. I'm not sure like how he's going to make your uh, exam, but still like it's good to talk about at least the key concept. Now there are two um, mobility dependence on temperature, mobility when you are considering only the lattice scattering, mobility when you are only considering the ionized, carrier, ionized centers um, scattering. Now these are two different things. Lattice scattering, as you know, like when uh, those lattice vibrations so because of those lattice vibrations, there can be the scatterings, right? And how the mobility depends on it. Well, we, we can see like uh, the formula here, T to the power negative three by two. Okay, so if we just consider this mobility, like mobility when there is only lattice scattering, in that case, the mobility will actually increase when you decrease the temperature, okay? And when you have, only the ionized center scattering, well, and ionized, like this number of the ionized centers, like how many are there? Like if there are more ionized centers, when I say ionized centers, how are you getting those ionized centers in that material? Well, those uh, dopant and acceptor atoms, they're losing or gaining electrons, okay? So over here, this mobility is inversely proportional to that number. Of course, if that number increases the mobility, it's uh, the, uh, the charges will be less mobile, okay? Think of like that. And T to the power three by two, which means like if the temperature increases in this case, what is going to happen? Like it, there will be less chances that or less time the, the carriers will actually spend in the vicinity of those ionized centers. So that means the mobility actually increases, okay? So just keep that thing in mind. And when you have like multiple mobilities here, they have just shown you two, there can be more. So you just have to get the net mobility using this formula, okay. And okay, let me see if someone sent message. Okay, nothing, just hello. Okay, hello to everyone. Okay, so 
So what we have here is, um, well, resistivity is a reciprocal of the conductivity. And you, you, you already know the formula and some of the other formulas that you might need, uh, they are like uh, basic formulas. You have uh, studied these things before probably. Well, electric field, the potential difference, the voltage uh, per unit length, the distance and current density is gonna be like this. And our resistance is, okay, the resistivity and the length and the area, we know like how they are related. Okay, just give me a minute. Uh, Okay, so what I have added here, if you have graph of um, drift velocity versus electric field, okay, so something like, something like this, electric field and drift velocity. Um, slope will uh, be the mobility. Okay, that's what we know. That's how we define the mobility, VD over E, how fast that carrier gonna move under the effect of the electric field. For small electric fields, okay, this assumption is for small electric fields. For higher electric fields, this uh, VD, it gets saturated, okay? Let's keep that thing in mind. Okay, and then there is something uh, we, uh, okay, still we, we, still we are, um, uh, talking these things uh, when we considering the thermal equilibrium, okay? Keep that thing in mind. And uh, the diffusion current density and the drift current density. So you can see like the first two parts, they are for drift. And then these two parts, as I have already mentioned it here, this is going to be the diffusion current densities for the electrons and for the holes. And if you go back and see that those formulas in, um, your book, you, you will see there's a negative sign with the, when you find the diffusion for P, okay? So gradient of concentration and induced electric field. Well, when you have like a gradient of concentration, of course, uh, there will be the diffusion effect and of course the induced electric field will be there. And the formula uh, is over here. It depends like the, you, you can see that this is, this is the thing that's going to tell you like the how, that concentration is changing with respect, with respect to X. And the good thing is like, we are just considering one dimensional thing. So it's going to be easy, okay? KT over E, again, I asked that question uh, in the tutorial. KT over E, of course, the uh, units are uh, that of the potential difference, okay? So thermal voltage, uh, and then the Einstein relationship, well, very important. In many questions, you need it. So diffusion coefficient, for the electrons divided by the mobility coefficient, uh, mobility uh, for the electrons, okay? And if uh, you have uh, studied this, you probably know that for diffusion dn, the units are going to be like, if you're uni using centimeter for the length, so centimeter squared uh, per second. For this one, it's the mobility, which is the uh, drift velocity over electric field. So that is going to be this thing, right? These are the units. And for for this one, you, you can see like the unit volts, okay? So yeah, so you got the value and you, you will need this uh, for many problems, okay? So why I'm actually going over these things? Because for those problems, you need to know and you need to understand the formulas and how to use those formulas and different conditions under which you can actually use those formulas. And okay, then the Hall effect, um, is there anyone who does not understand the concept of the Hall effect, like the uh, what's happening inside? Is there anyone who doesn't understand this thing? Probably you are all understand it, right? So that's the good thing that we don't have to talk about like what's happening. I, I talked about this thing uh, during the uh, labs. I think it was lab three. Okay, now. Again, the key formulas, you should be aware of those key formulas. Um, when it is going to be N-type, it's going to be the Hall voltage is good. You're gonna see the negative sign there, right? And because the Hall voltage is going to be a negative for N-type, you, when you're gonna get the concentration, because concentration is just a number, okay? So that means number should be positive. So that means when you plug in the VH negative here, so this negative, negative, of course, you're gonna end up with something 
uh, positive, okay? Just a number. Okay, and then um, for mobility, you, you're gonna get, um, you, you have the formula and uh, why I put the figure here, like, because uh, you should know like what is L, which length we are considering as L, along which we applied that uh, electric field, okay? The applied electric field, that is the length L. And W is the width of that sample. And D is going to be like the thickness of the sample, okay? So when you use this one, better to understand like what is W, what is L, and what is D, okay? And then, okay, you, you apply voltage and Ix the current, uh, you have those, and is going to be concentration. So if this is for the N type. Now, the same thing for the P type, the only difference you can see the VH is positive here. That's why you, when you just plug VH positive here, you don't have that negative sign here that can, that should be making it positive because it's already positive. Okay? So there is like uh, no negative sign here. Again, like the mobility. Okay, so, well, um, I have selected some problems. And after this lesson, um, you have your exam on Friday. I will try to solve a few more problems um, because I, I got a document where like uh, there are some extra problems, probably something from the website or professor's website or somewhere. I, I don't exactly know, uh, but there is a, that document. So there are some extra problems. So I will solve those problems. I'll put the questions there. So before you go to your exam, just uh, make it maybe spend like five, 10 minutes looking over those problems and just go over those problems. Okay, they, they will be completely solved problems, okay? So, and one thing, um, even for uh, the module five and six, I won't be able to cover like each single topic here, okay? So there might be some missing topics. So go back, see your book, see the website and see like if there are topics that we missed here, just uh, make sure you actually go over those topics as well, okay? So don't miss anything. So whatever we are doing, it's not going to be a complete preparation. Be careful. Okay, the conductivity of a semiconductor layer varies with, okay, you, you got the conductivity and it's the distance uh, dependent. So, <coughs> sorry. And where, okay, this is going to be like uh, the, sigma naught and and d is equal to this so the d is also given fine if the thickness of the semiconductor layer is this thing fine determine the average conductivity of this layer so you have to get the average conductivity how you will get an average value of something you sum those uh components like if, if you have like, uh, because this is going to change over the length, right? So definitely we have to add up it. Uh, of course, it's going to be not going to be discrete. It's going to be continuous. So that, that means for the sum, we need to use the integral, right? And divided by, of course, that T, the value, right? So what we actually going to do is that to get the average value, we have to, first of all, okay, we have to get uh, from zero to T, of course, from the minimum to the maximum limit. So we have to do this. This is the sum, the only thing, because it's going to be continuous thing. So that's why integral divided by the T, right? So that's how you're gonna get the average value. If you have a question here, please do let me know. This relation is already given. So there's no problem there. And of course, uh, dx. Okay, um, be very careful. This the dx that is, is going to be that differential, okay? Don't mix it with this d. Okay, um, what we have here now, the average. Okay, now this is just a constant, this one. And this is also some constant value we have already. So we just have to integrate this part, right? The exponential. So it's, it's going to be just the same thing, exponential minus x over d. And then the derivative of this argument, the argument is negative x over d, which is going to be negative one over d, yes? So, so I'm going to take the constants out of it. These are the constants. 
and then writing like now I'm integrating this and so it's going to be okay and then sorry not multiply by we are not doing the derivative divided by the derivative of that thing the argument this argument okay if I take the derivative of this thing so it's gonna be negative one over d yes and of course you have those limits there okay so now it's going to be okay negative d sigma naught over d and if i plug in the upper limit it's going to give me exponential negative something so let's plug in the value it's going to be like this right minus if you plug in the lower limit so this will become zero so exponential zero that's just going to give you one yes okay so now you just have to see what values you have exponential t over d why I'm writing the same thing again. Okay, let's put a dot here so that you may know it's just two constants being multiplied, okay? It's not the differential of that thing. Okay, so now I have D 0 0.3, so fine, sigma naught. This is sigma, right? We call it sigma. Correct me if I'm wrong. T, so T is given. So T is given, D is given. So yeah, you, you have everything. So you just have to plug in the values and you will get the answer. That is the average conductivity. Are you okay with this? Okay, no questions means you are okay with this, okay? So I will upload the document today, okay? After filling these things, like putting the answers there, I have to do the calculations. I'm not doing it right now, it's just gonna waste time. Okay, now we've done this, this one, 5.20. So what do we have here? Consider a silicon at 300K, assume the electron mobility. The kinetic energy of an electron in the conduction band is this. Okay, um, another thing like the velocity of the carriers, there are two velocities that they might talk about. One is that drift velocity and the other one that thermal velocity, okay? Just uh, to give you information about the velocities. Okay, uh, we don't, I don't know if we will be using that here. Um, where M and steric is the effective mass and VD is the drift velocity, fine. Determine the kinetic energy of an electron in the conduction band, fine. If the applied electric field is this, if it's this, okay, we can solve it for one and we can do question. Okay, so let's go with the first one. Then electric field is given as 10 volts per centimeter. Okay, now we have, you're given with mu n equal to 1350 and definitely for the kinetic energy i need to know like the, the they are actually giving us the formula okay so this is the formula we have the drift velocity we need to know the drift velocity so i want one of you to actually answer me like how I'm going to get the drift velocity. Let me see who's going to answer me. Uh, okay. Jason, can you tell me how I'm going to get the drift velocity? I have mobility and I have E. Um, well, if we have mobility, and E here, I'm just checking mm -hmm. through my notes. Uh, 
there was some formula for the mobility, something like. Oh, yeah, you have the, well, the, the mobility. Oh, God, I'm sorry to forget. It, but... No problem. Like, mobility. Uh, the, the, uh, okay, I'm not going to, uh, I'm not uh, asking you a question just to, to test you. I, I'm just asking, like, because uh, it's going to be a little interactive. So it's good yeah. for you guys. Okay. Okay, there it is. So, yeah, heard, yeah, 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 no problem. Blank, but it's, not, yeah. nah, it's okay. Thank you. So, mobility, guys, mobility, as I explained earlier, is like how fast. Uh, those charges they're gonna move in under the effect of the electric in response to the electric field. Okay, so it is actually the drift velocity over the electric field. Okay, so now you just have to, uh, of course, uh, get the VD. So VD is just going to be you just have to multiply it, and for this you can have like thirteen fifty. Just be very careful with the units. Uh, all the units should, should be like consistent. For example, for the length here, I can see the centimeter. So here is centimeters so fine. And the volts and the volts. So yeah, we can simply multiply it. So uh, I know like uh, for the drift velocity, the unit should be like centimeter per second if I just do this. So it's gonna be like this value, okay? Centimeter per second. And if you want to get that in, uh, meter per second so you just have to wait okay two zeros and it turns part negative two that's going to give you in meter per seconds in case you need it so this can be written as 1.31234 1 times bar four four and negative two just two meter per second in case you want it to be in meter per second. In centimeter per second, you have already here 1.3 times per four, okay? So what else we, okay, we, we are actually looking for the kinetic energy, right? And for the kinetic energy, they have given you the formula. So one by two, okay, M and steric, it's already given, Vd squared. Okay, so we have M and steric is effective mass this. So probably we have to get the effective mass like uh, it should be, uh, it's the silicon. Let me check the effective mass for silicon. It should be end of the book. Okay, it's gonna be one point zero eight in one point zero eight and not. You will be given with these. Don't worry. And Squared. I'm not being the rest mass of an electron, okay? 9.1 in times 1, negative 3, 1. Okay, for VD, um, if I need the standard units for the kinetic energy, which is the joules. So I should be using this like meter per second, okay? So just plug in the value. That is going to be 1.3 in times bar two squared. Whatever the value you get will be in joules. You can convert that into electron volts if you want. And for the, that, you know the conversion. One electron volt is equal to 1.6 in times bar negative 19 joules, right? Okay. Um, make sure you use the right conversion in case you need it in electron volts. Okay, so that is going to be the kinetic energy in this case. So yeah, you can also do this for one kilo, uh, 1000 volt per centimeter. And it's nothing going to change. You just have to plug in the values and you'll get the answer, okay?
let me know if you have any confusion, anything you want to ask. Okay, so the next one, a semiconductor material has electron and hole mobilities given respectively when the conductivity is considered as a function of hole concentration. This thing, okay. Conductivity is being considered as the function of the whole concentration. Show that the minimum value of this can be written as this. Okay. This is intrinsic conductivity. Show that the corresponding whole concentration is this one. Okay, let's first do the part A. <clears throat> okay, how you write down the conductivity formula? You have uh, E mu n, n, and then E mu p and p. Okay, we can write down this one. Thermal equilibrium concentrations. Uh, they're using p non, so yeah, just uh, use this one. Okay, now you can see like here, first of all, like, uh, of course we will use the calculus. How we get the minimum value of something? We have to first take the derivative of that, right? And the derivative should be zero because um, the tangent for the minimum value or the maximum value is, is slope will be zero, yes? If you know the calculus. So we have to get the derivative that is the slope of the tangent, it should be zero. So we will plug in it equals zero, even if it's maximum or minimum, okay? In, in either case, you, you're gonna take the derivative and put it equal to zero. Okay, and then I can see that you have, uh, they say like it's the function of the whole concentration. So better to convert that n naught to p naught as well, okay? So that we may have only one variable here on which this thing will depend. So n naught p naught is equal to n i squared, right? So that means n naught is equal to n i squared over p naught. So we try to plug in the values here. Okay. And now, because we are going to get the minimum value, so the minimum value will be when the derivative gives us zero, right? So taking the derivative, with respect to what? It, it depends on the P naught, so with respect to P naught, okay? So this will give me, what will be the value like P naught to the power negative one, so negative one, everything else is gonna be constant, right? So negative E mu n, n i squared, and then P naught, negative one, negative one, negative two, okay? And over here, simply E mu P. If you have a problem with the derivative, please do let me know. And then you, you can simply just to have this in positive exponent, just write it down like, like this, right? Okay. And maybe get rid of these. Okay, now we have this thing. Now, this should be equal to zero for the value to be minimum, right? So just put it equal to zero. So if you put it equal to zero, this thing is going to, okay, uh, I'm just gonna do this step directly. You you plug in this equal to zero, you take this to the other side, okay? So I'm gonna write it down, then this will be equal to zero. slope should be equal to zero, yes? Okay, now I take this to the other side and I squared uh, back P naught squared E 
mu p. Okay, now we want to know at what value of this is, uh, at what value of p this is going to be the case. So we that means we want to get that p naught, right? So p naught squared is equal to this. Okay, e e cancels out. So means now you have mu n over mu p, and this is n i squared, right? Okay, and you want to take the square root of it. So p naught is going to be okay. Mu n mu p square root, and there will be n i here as it is. Okay, that is the value where this slope is zero, okay? So that means now we have to, let's call this star. Is this in between and star? So, That means now sigma would be sigma minimum, right? And it should be equal to E mu n n i squared. And here is P naught. So it's gonna be, okay, I'm just gonna directly write it down something like mu n, okay, let's write it. It's mu P and here it should be n i. Okay, plus e mu p. So I can see that, okay, I'm doing it here because I don't see any space. So this is square, this is uh, to the power one, this is to the power one over two. So simply getting rid of the square root here and you will have a square root here, right? And you get rid of this thing. And what else we have? Okay, well, we wanted to give it the shape of this thing. Let's see if we can get that. So we want to, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't plug in the value here, uh, P naught. Sorry, just one moment. Did I use the right equation? E mu n, n i squared and P naught. Instead of P naught, I plugged in the value, and here I should plug in the P naught, and it's gonna be mu n, mu P, and of course, n i, like this, right? So now it's the right equation. So let me see if I can take this to it. Okay, now I just have to solve it. So you get, let me see if I plug it in the right equation here. E mu n and I squared phi. And P naught in the denominator, mu n here, mu P got here, N I. And yeah, that's fine. Okay, now, Now, because we have already given with, sorry, we, are, we already have this thing here, so better to keep an eye on the final relationship. This is what we are trying to make. So this should be, okay. Hmm. Okay, um, let's first, okay, this one is sigma minimum, 
and they have oh yeah there, there is another term that we should be aware of intrinsic conductivity okay we will talk about that let's first uh, try to try to simplify this one and we will if I take that in common like E, this is something that I can take out. And square root mu P, I can take it out. And square root mu and that and I. Okay. So I can take E and I square root mu N square root mu P. So that that gives me I'm left with only one here. Plus here it will be here with me P and P is already here. So which turns out to be one here. So one plus one, that becomes two, right? That means this is simply actually two here, right? So this is a minimum, but I can see there is that intrinsic conductivity. So I, I need to know like, what is that intrinsic conductivity? Of course, you know the formula for, okay, let me, You know the formula for conductivity. And when it's intrinsic, that means you're gonna, this is going to be uh, like not N, not P, not, it's simply like intrinsic carrier concentration, right? So you, and you can take it out, N I, and you have mu N plus mu P. Okay, it's the same formula, just me getting it for the intrinsic. Um, conductivity, let's call it intrinsic conductivity, okay? So now what do we have here? This thing, if you look at E and I, E and I. So because I want to include the intrinsic conductivity here, so I want to get a relationship for this one, which is going to be this, and of course, mu n plus mu p, okay? So that will be incorporated here, okay? Now I have this one. Like if, if you just want you to get, okay, what is um, uh, conductivity minimum? So that is the nice answer, okay? You don't need to do any further simplification or modification. But because they have specifically given you this, um, final expression. So that means we have to make this, okay? So that's why we have to do this extra step. So E and I instead of that, this thing, and mu N plus mu P, and this is going to be like, okay, you can write it down in like this, and there is two here, okay? So now this is exact, exactly what they have given you, okay? So that is what we wanted to prove. So we have shown that this is equal to this, okay? And now I can treat of this thing. Okay, so yeah, we, we got uh, the sigma minimum. Okay, what else? We have a minimum connectivity can then be as this thing. And this one show that the corresponding whole concentration is P not equal to this one. Okay. Now, if you see the whole concentration, where was that whole concentration? It was here, right? P not is equal to mu n mu P over Ni, okay? So that is the corresponding whole concentration. So 
yeah, you have already shown it, okay? So in case like you wonder like where is that part? So this is the, you can show this like, okay, that that's something we did on our, on way to solve this one. So I'm gonna put this here. Answer to B. So this part, okay? In case you just wonder, like, where is the part B? Okay, so that is going to be the solution to 5.22. Okay, let's try the next one. Assume that mobility of electrons in silicon at 300K. So from the last module, uh, complete ionization and complete freeze out. Like for freeze out, they just say freeze out. Don't need to say complete freeze out. So make sure you understand those concepts. They asked that question uh, on your midterm as well. So, okay. Uh, assume the mobility of the electrons in silicon, there is the mobility, is this. Also assume that the mobility is limited by lattice scattering and varies as this. Okay, so they are already telling you like it's uh, going to be uh, only the lattice scattering and this is going to limit that mobility. Okay, and then determine the electron mobility at 200K and 400K. Well, it, it shouldn't be that difficult. You, you just have to, this is going to be like uh, at 300K. So you can just use the formula and this is like, clearly T raised to the power negative three over two, right? So we know that this proportional to that thing. So mu and is going to be like this, this value and T to the power negative three by two. Now, because this is the value at 300, so for any other temperature, so you, you may write it down as like this thing and T over 300, the power negative three by two. Now for 300, you can simply like uh, um, put T is equal to 300 and you will get this value, which is the value here, okay? And it is limited by this vector. Okay, now for any other temperature, for example, they ask you to do this for 200K. So what you're gonna do for 200K? You just have to, you just have to use the same expression, right? Okay, I can write it down as make exponent positive, I can write down like this just for the ease of the calculation, okay? For 200, just replace that value with the 200. And you're gonna get the answer. And for 400, again, like you just have to plug in the corresponding value. This was easy, right? Okay, now, yeah, one difficult question from your book. That's why they put the steric there. Um, they think it's difficult. Okay, um, in N-type silicon, the Fermi energy level, it varies linearly with distance over a short range at x is equal to zero. EF minus EFI is equal to this, and at x is equal to this. Now, one thing is, um, definitely true that because it is changing, so that means that concentration of the doping is changing, right? That's the only way this can change, right? Okay, and EF minus EFI is equal to this one, and it is linearly increasing or decreasing, but linearly changing, where is linearly? Write the expression for the electron concentration over the distance. Okay, so we are interested in electron concentration, so we need to know like, the formula that relates the concentration of in elect for electrons to that uh, the Fermi difference in Fermi levels, like intrinsic and the 
uh, current Fermi level. So if you remember that exponential thing, EF minus EFI, something like that. Okay, if the electron diffusion coefficient is this, okay, you got the electron diffusion coefficient. Let's use this. Calculate the electron diffusion current density. Now, this is the current density, and diffusion current density, if you go back and see the formula, it depends on that gradient thing, right? So we will look into it later. So x is equal to zero and x is equal to this one. So no problem. Let's first, let's first see like uh, add x is equal to zero, this one. So first of all, write the expression um, for the electron concentration over the distance. So, oh, sorry, n is equal to, and I exponential EF minus EFI, right? Over KT. Okay. Now, what they tell us, they say that the Fermi level varies linearly with distance over a short range. So this is the this is the thing that is going to tell you the Fermi level, right? So linearly means like it must follow that equation of the line, yes? So just assume this to be like, because it is changing linearly. So Bx plus C, right? Equation of the line. You, you sometimes we write mx plus c like it's just different notation, right? You 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 understand that? I think uh, difficult there. Okay, so that just tells us that it is going to change linearly. Okay, now now bx plus c, and you can see like the maximum value. Okay, at x is equal to zero. So if I put x is equal to zero here you can see like you will be left with EF minus EFI is equal to C, which is already given 0 0.4. So that means C is equal to 0 0.4 electron volt. Okay, that is already given because when X is zero, this thing blows to zero. So you just have the difference in the Fermi level at X is equal to zero. Okay, so you have this value. Now, if I try to write it down, at x is equal to this value, because the, these are the two values we already know. So x is equal to terrace bar negative three centimeter. EF minus EFI, it is equal to 0 0.15 electron volts. I'm not gonna write down the units, no problem. B x plus C. C is equal to 0 0.4 electron volts, right? Okay, what is the x value here? 10 is for negative three, right? So just plug in the value here. So trans bar negative three. Okay, now that means you can get the value for B. So you already have C, you're gonna get the B, so you somehow will be able to get that linear dependence, right? So that means now you're gonna get B equal to 0 0.15 minus 0 0.4 divided by tennis bar negative three, right? So if you solve this one, 0 0.15 minus 0 0.4 in times bar three. Okay. Just 0 0.15 minus 0 0.4. Plus that one times bar negative, sorry. Not negative, it's going to become plus. Ah, 
values. The value twenty five minus point four gives me negative zero point two five. Yeah, like this is point four, not point four. Yeah, ten is bar plus three, right? Now, this is uh, if you look at this equation, this is going to tell you the slope of that thing, right? That linear dependence slope. Okay, so that line, the because it's just gonna follow that line, and you can clearly see from there, like at zero, it is zero point four, and at some distance zero like this distance is 0 0.15 so of course it is decreasing right so yes we must get a negative slope okay so now that means now we can write it down as ef efi is equal to negative 0 0.25 tennis bar three and times power negative three over there. So it's really just cancel out. So you just have negative 0 0.25 plus 0 0.4, right? It's gonna be, hold on. You have, why I'm planning here, it should be here, right? So you got B value 0 0.25 times power three. So in tennis bar three X plus C is zero point four. Okay. Now going back to the question, write the expression of electron concentration over the distance okay so that means we got this ef minus efi now it's time to get this electron concentration it's here okay so before that let me get rid of this So n is equal to n i exponential was e f minus e f i right not e f minus e f i yeah e f minus e f i or k t so e f minus e f if i or k t I'm just gonna plug in the value so negative zero point two five in times bar three x plus zero point four this x is very important, keep it there. And don't miss it, divided by kt, right? Okay, yeah. So this is going to give us the electron concentration, it's dependence over x, okay? So for any x value, you can get that concentration, okay? And what is the concentration of uh, the electrons? So that is going to be the answer to part A. Okay, now see what else they're asking. If the electron diffusion coefficient, fine, calculate the diffusion current density at x is equal to this. Okay, if you go back and you see the electron diffusion current density, you will see the formula, of course, subscript n because it's for electrons. So it's gonna be dn and of course the gradient of the electrons over x, okay? So that means if I have n, I can simply plug in n here, and of course I'll take the derivative and it will uh, turn out to be some value, right? So they ask like, if the electron did calculate different current density at x equals zero, so okay, once we have that thing, we can plug in x values, no problem, but yeah, so the main key thing is to get that derivative, okay? So let's try to get the derivative. So you have 
E, you have been given with the value of B and the constant. So if I take the derivative of this thing, well, N I is just constant. It stays there for the exponential, the derivative, probably you already know. So it's just gonna be same thing, multiply by the derivative of the argument, okay? So exponential, whatever is inside is gonna stay there. Sometimes my good notes, like they do this. I don't know like why, but this is a big problem. Okay, exponential as it is, and then the derivative of this thing. So if I see the derivative of this thing, of course, this portion will give me zero because uh, the, uh, the constant 0 0.4. So I'll be just left with that value, 0 0.25 to the, like whatever, to the power uh, three divided by KT, right? So I'll have negative 0 0.25 times power three divided by KT, okay? Just a new cost. Okay, now they, Oh, now, now you already got that formula, okay? So this is the complete expression that you need here for current density. The only thing now for, let's say they're asking for x is equal to zero, okay? X is equal to this. So I'm gonna do the x equal to zero because it's easier to do. Uh, the hardest part, I will leave it for you, okay? Uh, it's not going to be hard. You just have to plug in x value, okay? So jn for x is equal to zero. It should be you plug in x zero. So you plug in x zero here. Even this is not easy. There are so many terms there. So you have to plug in. So exponential uh, 0 0.4 over kt. And of course, this constant is still there. Negative 0 0.25 in times power three over kt. Okay, so you just have to, what is the temperature? I think they have already given us 300. Um, in n type, the formula was to get to write the diffusion coefficient, this is the electron diffusion coefficient, this. C is equal to this. Hmm. Linearly varies with this one, the electron. Okay. Um, now you have to see, like, uh, you have to ask your teacher, like, uh, if they can assume T is equal to like 300, so get the value for KT 0 0.0259. You just have to plug in. There's nothing like that you should be deriving or. Uh, Solve it, okay? You just have to plug in the values. You already given with dn. You know what is E. You know the intrinsic carry concentration for silicon. If it's just silicon, it's gonna be like 1.5 times per 10, okay? Um, and just remember that one only is silicon. So yeah. So you just have to plug in the value here. You're gonna get the answer. So if I assume 300, KT just 0 0.0259, okay? So yeah. That's it from this question. You for the next one again, x is equal to five times for negative four. So just put x is equal to this value. You of course will get a little different expression for the final one. Okay. So have you got any questions? Just let me know. Okay, a semiconductor hull device at three hundred k. Um, okay, they are giving us the temperature. Uh, D is equal to this one. Um, this D was the thickness, I believe. Yes. W was the width, and L was the length along which the electric field was applied, if I'm not wrong. Let me see. Yeah, I'm right. I remember it, okay, okay. Just give me a minute, I have to stop this and reopen this one. Uh, 
Okay. Okay. So you have semiconductor device the dimensions are given. The following parameters, Ix, fine, fine. You have those values. You'll probably be needing the formulas. It is equal to this. Uh, VH is equal to this thing, which means which means it's gonna be okay. Let me ask someone actually. I like I like asking questions. So who's going to? Okay, Ambel. Uli, uh, if I'm not pronouncing that wrong. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so can you tell me like uh, if VH is negative, will it be like, uh, wh what are the majority carriers? Uh, N type. Exactly. Right? Since yeah. it's lower yeah. than zero. Yeah, yeah. So do you have that negative, the Hall's voltage? It's going to be N type. Well done. Thank you. Okay, so BZ, like the Z dimension, uh, direction. Okay. Determine the conductivity type. Okay, fine. Well, we already got that. Someone told us the answer, majority carrier concentration. The, like if uh, it's N type, of course, the N majority, so N value. So you have the formula for N, no problem. We can get that. Majority carrier mobility, we have the formula for that. No worries, we just have to plug in the values, okay? So no problem. So it's gonna be N type. Why it is n type that VH telling us that is VH is negative, right? So VH it's negative. I hate it on this thing doesn't work. I hate the writing. Okay, it's gonna be n type, that's for sure. And Majority carrier concentration, that is N, right? Just go back and see the formula. I have the formula with me, so it's going to be just plugging in the values. There is a negative sign, if you remember, because VH itself is negative, so this will turn out to be positive and get multiplied by VH. Okay, BZ and here E, D, and VH. Okay. So just plug in the values. Someone asked a question uh, in the discussion board the other day that I don't know, I don't really exactly remember, but it was something about like, if this is E, should I put negative or plus? So once they have that formula, they have probably sorted out all the things, okay? All the aspects. So just plug in the magnitude of E, okay? 1.6 in terms of negative 19. That's it. Don't worry about the signs, okay? Don't make it complicated. So negative. And this this will become plus, of course, Ix is given 0 0.5. And just convert to like the standard in so times by negative three. Bz is going to be 0 0.1. And here 1.6 in times, sorry, 1.6 in times bar negative 19. D is already given. It's times power negative three into times power negative two. Converting that into meters, okay? Standard for all is going to be consistent. Um, VH is negative, so that negative already sorted out because I'm using plus here now, 5.2 in times power negative three. So nothing difficult, it's just a calculator job now. You, you'll get the answer, okay? Now, the C part, they ask of like majority carrier mobility. Majority carriers, they are the electrons, okay? Now again, um, because you are going to prepare for the final exam, so that means the cases when there is like thermal equilibrium and when there are cases there is no thermal equilibrium, okay? That thermal equilibrium is just like the chapter six. So means uh, you should know that for chapter four, chapter five, we considering the thermal equilibrium. So nothing like uh, unusual, okay? Unusual in a way that mostly like we will be concerned with like 
whatever they are giving us, right? Like majority, majority, minority, minority, carry concentration, mobility. But in case of like when the thermal equilibrium is disturbed, especially when in bipolar transport, I'll try to do some questions there. And I have chosen like the most difficult questions. There are only a few, but I'm choosing those questions. So for those cases, you should be aware of that the in bipolar transport, like when they're gonna move together, they're going to follow the characteristics of the minority carriers, okay? So it will, for example, it's a N-type material. So you are more interested in finding the mobility of holes, okay, rather than those of electrons. Because the holes and electrons, they're going to move together. They will have a combined mobility, and that mobility will depend on the holes because the holes are minority carriers there, okay? So keep in mind the differences there. It's not that difficult, just make sure you understand the concept, okay? Okay, so mu n, uh, you just have to use the formula, nothing very difficult. So I'm just gonna use the formula. You can go back and see the formula there. We, we already talked about it. Okay. Um, and again, like you should be aware of what is W, what is D, what is L? L? the length along which the we apply the electric field, okay, in the Hall semiconductor. W, the width of um, that semiconductor, where we talked about, okay, the um, carriers, for example, my majority carriers will be accumulated on one end, on the other end. So that uh, difference in those ends is the W, the width, okay? D, the thickness of, along which the, you are applying in the direction of which you are applying the magnetic field, okay? So it's not that difficult. Just carefully uh, see that diagram um, once probably and try to make uh, connections of like those formulas with the diagram, okay? So here, yeah, nothing um, difficult. Just you have everything there. Just plug in the values and you're gonna get the mobility, okay? And uh, the units for the mobility, you already know the units, right? We, we talked about it. So, yep, that's it from this question. If you have anything you want to ask, you, you may ask. Again, like another difficult question, as they say it's difficult with that steric. In gallium arsenide, the donor impurity concentration varies with this. Okay, the concentration changes. That is going to be constant, and it depends on now x value. Okay, for x being like starting from 0 to l, like the maximum x value is l. So that means again, you have x here. Is one over that thing, and when it's zero, it's just zero. So that's the maximum. So that means the concentration is going to decrease over time, right? Okay, where um, L is equal to zero, well, we'll see if it's decreasing or not. Uh, we will see. Uh, apparently, it seems like it's going to be that decreasing trend. L is equal to zero, 0 0.1 micrometers, and D given. Assume mobility, well done, they're giving us the mobility, so no worries, we don't have to look at any graph, any logarithmic uh, weird graph, and T is equal to 300K, derive the expression for the electron diffusion current density versus the distance over the given range of X. Okay, not only that we need the electron diffusion current density uh, thing, but we actually we actually uh, should get in terms of like how it is changing with X. So simply like in terms of like this thing, okay? We will see like how we can do that. And determine the induced electric field that, generate, that generates a drift current density that compensates the diffusion current density. Okay, be very careful. They're asking us to get the induced electric field, but under the condition, then the drift current density will be compensated with the diffusion current density, okay? So that's the condition. Um, let's go with the first part first. So, well, we know like uh, we have to diffusion current density versus distance. So diffusion current density, we know like it's going to be, okay, it's n-type donor. Oh yeah, so it's gonna be E dn. Again, just go and see the formula. We have already used this formula. So at 300K, what do you expect at 300K?
the complete ionization. What complete ionization means? That all the donor atoms, they've, they have already given out their electrons, okay? So like each donor atom giving you one electron, right? Sorry. So you just have to plug in the same, like this is ND, the donor's concentration, the same as like the electrons, because at 300K at complete ionization, it will be completely dominated by the donor's concentration, okay? Because the electrons coming from those donors, all the donors are actually giving those electrons. And you can see like that's 10 to the power 16. It's this way bigger than the intrinsic value for gallium arsenide. I don't remember the value for gallium arsenide, but I, I do remember that it should be less than that of silicon. Again, make sure I might be wrong there, okay? But just see the value, okay? So you have E, D, N, and so now you would see like this is probably the key key step where you have to decide what is N here, okay? So you're gonna plug in the value here, right? This is the ND value. So ND naught. And why are we putting it? Because it's the complete ionization. So we can assume this to be equal to the donor's concentration. Okay, so again, won't be very difficult. You have to take the derivative and you guys are really good at calculus, so not a big deal, yeah? So let's do it. Um, e, D, N, and if I take the derivative, well, this thing stays here as a constant and this thing is going to be exponential negative X over L multiply by negative one over L, okay? So let me try that. Okay, so That means now it is going to be negative one over L. After taking the derivative, right? Okay, so what do we have? Um, we have to plug in the values. We have mu n, it is equal to 6,000. I'm not writing the units. Uh, we have the units already, so no worries. So we need dn. Is there any way I get dn if I know mu n? Anyone? Um, maybe, actually, let me see who's going to tell me. Okay, um, I'm gonna say your last name because that's easier for me to pronounce. Liang, Chu Liang, Chu Lin Liang. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. What is going to be dn? Like. Do you know how to get dn, diffusion coefficient here? If you are there. Oh, I don't know. Okay, um, so you, you just have to, if you remember, there was a relation, uh, we called it Einstein relation. That was something relating the mobilities and the uh, diffusion coefficients, okay? So I'm gonna write it down here, so dn, it was something dn over mu n equal to dp over mu p equal to kt over e. That kt over e, when converted into joules, it was like just 0 0.0259, that whole thing, okay? So that means if I have to get dn, I will just do mu n times 0 0.0259. So 0 0.0259. times mu n, mu n is 6,000. So just doing the calculation, 6,000 times 0 0.0259. Okay, it's gonna be 155.4. You already know the units in case you don't know is centimeter squared per second. Okay, so 
you have the dn as well now mu and dn okay so you got dn is already there and d naught is there exponential negative x over l so l is already given so x of course changes and this thing changes so let's see what they're asking us to do so derive the expression for the electron diffusion current uh, versus the distance. Okay, you just have to plug in these values. All the values you know, you're gonna get a final expression for JD. Okay, it's, it's going to be the same thing, just like instead of like these uh, constants, just plug in their values, okay? So you're gonna get some expression here. So negative one over L is, if you just plug in that negative one over just uh, convert that into, you have these in centimeter, centimeter squared per second. So better to go with centimeters. So 0 point, L is going to be 0 0.1 and micro is 10 is by negative six. So 10 is by negative four centimeter, okay? I'm writing this in centimeter. Okay, so now E is equal to, of course, 1.6 times power 19, 155.4, and, and D naught is equal to, Five in tennis bar, 16, exponential, negative x over L. Again, L is 0 0.1 in tennis bar, negative four in centimeters. Okay, yep. So, and the units should be ampere per centimeter squared. Yeah, so you've got the diffusion current density as a function of x, the distance, okay? Now, determine the induced electric field that generates a drift current density that compensates the diffusion current density. So that should actually compensate each other. So that means the net should be zero, okay? So that means you can write it down like zero should be equal to diffusion plus drift, right? So now for the drift current density, you know that for the drift current density, it is uh, E mu and because it's just the majority carriers. Okay. So N and E, sigma E, right? This thing is going to be sigma, the conductivity times E. So this should be equal to negative of this diffusion. So this will become plus, right? Because this is already negative sign there. So that means now you can write it down as Um, you have the drift, you have the diffusion, yes. diffusion, it depends on some exponential negative EX over L something, fine, and hmm, there is one thing that there is the end there, so what we can do is that just plug in the value for n because this is already converted into that exponential thing. So what I can do is that here you can write it down like E mu n and for n, you have to write down the value and D naught, you can plug in its value later. Okay, just a constant. 
minus x over L, and that is going to give you E. Okay. Now, from here, you can see like drift is equal to negative that diffusion. So negative diffusion means like this negative sign will cancel. It will cancel out. And this is already negative X over L. And here it is negative X over L, right? So I believe this negative X over L, negative X over L exponential term will get canceled out, okay? And there might be other terms that might get canceled out. For example, this is N D naught, right? This is N D naught. So N D naught, N D naught will be canceled out. E, E will be canceled out. This is E, it will be canceled out. And mu N, no mu, there's no mu N there. So that means you will have E equal to something. And let me write it down. I'm gonna directly plug in that here, okay? Just using this one, you will write it down. So it will be one over 0 0.1. This is one over L, okay? So one over 0 0.1 in terms bar negative four. E, e will be canceled out, so I'm not writing that thing. And this is dn, so it will stay there. So 155.4, okay? And this will be canceled out. This is nd naught, so we're not gonna keep it. Then the exponential minus x over l, exponential minus x over l. So we will get rid of that thing as well. So this thing, it should be equal to over here, you have mu n, it wasn't canceled out, and E, right? So that means now this E should be, if you have a problem there, just let me know, okay? I have directly uh, plugged in the value and canceled out the terms that will be canceled out. So 155.4 divided by 0 0.1 in times power negative four and mu n is 6,000. We already know that value. So let me see what it gives me. Five, four, divided by Two five nine zero. Of course, volt per centimeter. Okay, length units we have been using centimeter. Okay, volts per centimeter. This is V. Okay, so yeah, that's it. That's the electric field you got when when you say that the diffusion current density is compensating for the drift current density. Actually, the drift current density compensating for diffusion current density, they're just canceling each other. So yeah, using the value of N from this relationship, and we knew that because it's the complete ionization at 300K, so that means all the donors, they're gonna donate their electrons. So depending on this value, this is a very big number as compared to the intrinsic carry concentration for gallium arsenide, even if silicon is gonna be 10 per 10, so even then we can still use this one. So that means all the carriers, they are almost coming from the donors, okay? So yeah, that's how you're gonna solve this one. So yeah, it, it was a good question actually. There, it involved like a few steps and a few different things. Have you got a question? Please do let me know. Okay. Thanks God, it's uh, finished that chapter. Okay, now uh, just give me one minute, okay? Just one minute. Okay, but maybe like um, we can, uh, um, I can ask you like, if you are okay with um, whatever we have done so far, just stay silent. If you have any serious concern, any serious question, you may ask right now before we move on to the chapter six.
if I don't get a question, I would assume that you guys are okay with it. Okay. Okay, seems uh, you're good with it. Okay, now uh, we will uh, be talking about the non-equilibrium excess carriers. Um, although like uh, we talked about this thing uh, in the last tutorial, so, but yeah, just going over this again, if you missed that tutorial. So in case of like, first let's, let's talk about the thermal equilibrium, the generation rates, um, the rate at which uh, the carriers are being generated. Uh, the electrons, the holes, we know they are equal because if an electron, and this is something where we are talking about the direct uh, from bend to bend, okay? I will tell you what does that mean. Like there is the valence band and there is the conduction band. And we assuming there is no such impurities where we can have like mid level here, okay? So in actual semiconductors, there can be the levels, impurity levels here. So maybe electrons residing here for some time, okay? So, but right now we're not considering any of those uh, effects, okay? Just from band to band, okay? So we know like if there is one electron being uh, created in the conduction band, one hole will be created in the whole valence band and the rates are equal. And because it is time independent, so that means the recombination and the generation, they are all equal. This is the case when it is the thermal equilibrium, okay? Now, when we say excess carriers, excess carriers will be generated when you are going to use something like externally, some electric field, some force, light, that will excite electrons. And those electrons from the valence band, they will jump to the conduction band, okay? So of course, uh, the generation of the holes, that rate would be equal to the generation rate for the electron still, because the uh, same time you are creating an electron in the conduction band and the hole in a hole in the valence band, right? But um, the um, you would see like uh, the generation rate of holes equal to the generation rate of electrons, recombination rates of the holes equal to recombination of the electrons, but uh, you won't see like the uh, combination rate equal to the generation rate, like not all those terms will be equal because now there will be time dependencies there. We will talk about that. Don't worry about this aspect. We will see. Okay, again, we have seen this before. Uh, in case you have any problem there, just let me know. We, we talked about this thing in the tutorial, okay? In case you have a problem, you may ask uh, right now. Okay, in the case of thermal equilibrium, we had that one thing, and not P naught is equal to N I squared. When there is no thermal equilibrium, the total electrons concentration, the total hole concentration is not equal to the intrinsic carry concentration squared, okay? Keep that thing in mind. When we write it down here, the total concentration here is like that, which was at thermal equilibrium, plus the excess carry concentration, okay? For the holes, this one, and of course the excess carry. And you will see like we will be exchanging these terms, like we will be writing most of the times, we will be writing them equal. We, we can write delta and delta P, because ultimately those excess carriers being produced uh, will be equal, right? Uh, means like if, a, if an electron is being produced in the conduction band and hole will be produced in the balance band. So that number will be equal, okay? And there is something that is very important. Uh, there is assumption that they make when they do those questions there. It's the low level injection. Low level injection means that the excess carriers, if I'm considering a P-type material, let's say I have a P-type material, the excess carriers, they are way, way less than the holes, thermal equilibrium concentration of the holes, okay? In the N-type, that excess carrier concentration is less than less than that uh, thermal equilibrium concentration of electrons, okay? Okay, now it's time to get used to the um, terminology where mostly we will be concerned with the minority carrier characteristics, okay? So for example, if it's P-type, so the rate of recombination of the holes, it, it will be similar to the recombination rate of the electrons, the minority carriers. It will depend upon those, okay? So you will simply write it down, the excess carrier, that thing depend, divided by the lifetime for the minority carriers, the whole electrons, okay? Same thing for the N-type. Now it depends on that minority carrier lifetime, okay, the holes. Okay, now, and then there are like equations. Uh, we have already talked about it in the tutorial. What is that flux, the, uh, how, how it is changing with time, is time dependence, time dependence, and the generation rate for the holes, for the electrons, and the 
uh, this is going to be the recompose the lifetime, okay, mean lifetime, and then diffusion equation is time dependence on um, time dependence the time dependence uh, of the diffusion equations. Now you can see that it will be there. This thing, this thing, okay. So m bipolar transport. We already talked about it, like those uh, because of the induced electric fields, uh, those charges, they're gonna move together and their like movement and their characteristics, they will be same as the characteristics of like the minority carriers, uh, okay? And this is for the case when we are considering the low level injection, right? And most of the cases we will be talking about only the low level injection, okay? So that means if it's a P-type, this M bipolar diffusion coefficient, for example, there is a question and they ask you like, um, they give you like M bipolar, they ask you like get the M bipolar diffusion coefficient. So you know that it's the same as that of for the electrons, minority carrier diffusion coefficient, if it's talking about P-type, okay? The mobility for the M, bi M bipolar mobility is the same as the mobility of those electrons, right? And the same thing for N-type. So you have to get the values for the minority carriers, okay? And... Okay, of course, these are the equations that you will be using over and over again. But again, telling you, most of the times there will be the conditions given. And depending upon those conditions, you will have to decide what are the terms you're going to keep and what are the terms that you shouldn't be keeping. Okay, so for example, the steady state with respect to time, if it's no change in the carrier concentration. So yeah, it says carrier concentration, I should say it like that. And of course, like uh, for, if it's uniform, so it's distance dependence, like spatial dependence, that will be zero, right? And zero electric field means this term will blow to zero. And you, you can see like those key things there, like for example, the electric field is zero, so this term will blow to zero. And for example, the generation rate is zero, for example, the, you, they will give you some, you're gonna just blow this zero. And the concentration is like excess carrier concentration is uniform, for example. So it's dependence on like uh, the distance that's gonna blow to zero. It's the steady state, for example, this term will blow to zero, okay? Excess carriers, gradient like change with respect to time. And if, for example, there's a no excess carrier recombination. So if there is no recombination, that means that is the lifetime, like infinite lifetime. So that means this whole thing will blow to zero, okay? So I hope you are okay with these terms, okay? The most important thing is to understand the terms and different conditions. Uh, then like, um, because now you are talking about like the excess carriers, okay? So those excess carriers, of course, their um, concentration of the excess carriers, that is going to keep on ch changing with respect to time, and might be with respect to space, so like, yeah. So what is going to happen with the Fermi level? It won't be like similar to what we used to have before. Like, so because it's the concentration, excess carrier concentration gonna change, so we have to define another sort of Fermi level that, um, that should be treated as a quasi-Fermi level, okay? So, so we name it like quasi Fermi level just because those excess carriers, we don't know like that they, they're gonna keep on changing, okay? So it's not be some constant. So it depends on like just uh, replacing with that concentration with the now the thermal equilibrium concentration plus the excess carrier concentration. You can see for both of them, okay? And uh, then same thing, but here now that's the quasi Fermi level, sorry, here is gonna be, so, Eventually, we will be interested in that difference, okay? EFI still being the intrinsic formula level, okay? And if uh, you, uh, you, you, again, like, must go and see, like, the topics and try to understand the theory part, but, like, just uh, writing down the key uh, formulas that you will be deriving. So it's uh, dependence with respect to time. You will eventually, like, you will solve that differential equation and you will get this thing, okay? Where you can see, like, the time parameters, okay? The mean lifetime and the T. And with respect to space, you will get something like this, okay? Now there is this thing, uh, LM. You're gonna see this in the topic and I haven't actually talked about it yet in the class. So maybe I'll do that the next tutorial, but let me tell you like that LM, we call it the diffusion length, okay? Um, and that diffusion, again, the diffusion length, we will be concerned with 
like uh, the minority carriers now, right? So it, it is going to be the length through which that minority carrier will move before recombining, okay? So this is going to be that length Ln, okay? And you will see that in the book, it is something like diffusion coefficient and the mean lifetime, okay? Something like this. So, but yeah, you, you're gonna see that in the book. We haven't done this thing in the tutorial yet, but yeah, maybe this week, but even like we are going to do some questions now. Okay, so it's, it's gonna be like this. Okay, I have seen some of the uh, papers that where the, the teachers, they like to get something like this, where they have a figure and they put something like that. So I'm just uh, guessing that is, it might help you. So, okay, just give me a minute. Okay, now consider a bar of P-type silicon, fine. That is uniformly doped, mm, uniformly doped, like uh, doping is uniform. So that means throughout that distance that uh, doping is going to be the same, okay. And the value of, okay, you can see like acceptor impurities, right? Temperature is given, thank you. The applied electric field is zero, okay. Well done. In case we have to use the M bipolar transport equation, we will just get rid of that term with E, okay? A light source is incident on the end of the semiconductor as shown in figure. Okay, there is that and X is equal to zero where you are shining the light, okay? And on the steady state concentration of excess carrier generated X is zero is this one. Steady state, you already know like with respect to time, that concentration not gonna change with respect to time, okay? So at x is equal to zero, you have this, assume the following parameters, mu n given, mu p given, minority, okay, if it's p type, the minority carrier lifetime is this one, okay? And for the hold, it's gonna be this one. Neglecting surface effects, okay, what are the surface effects? We're gonna talk about in the next tutorial, but because they are also already saying neglecting surface effects, effects so we, we don't worry, we, we're not gonna, um, we don't bother, okay? So determine the steady state excess electron and hole concentration as a function of distance into the semiconductor. Okay, now we have to get, determine the steady state. We know that steady state means like with respect to time, that's gonna be zero, but their concentration, hole and electron concentration as a function of distance x into the semiconductor, like how that excess carrier concentration will change over the distance x. At zero, we know this is the value they, they are giving us, okay? Fine. Calculate the steady state electron and hole diffusion current densities. Okay, once we get this thing, we will talk about that. Diffusion current density, so uh, let's say two. So steady state, again, the steady state and electron hole diffusion current density as a function of distance. Again, it should be the function of the distance. Okay, so Let's try to solve this one. Okay, so what do we have here? Um, we can see KT is uh, going to be 0 0.0259 and this thing, okay. I told you like, the formula when is gonna depend on the distance. So that means we can actually use this one, right? And we need the diffusion length for that. So, so the diffusion length uh, is going to be, as I wrote the formula, diffusion coefficient. And we are very interested in LN rather than LP. It's, it's a p-type, so we are interested in the minority. Okay, so you you will see most of those characteristics. They they, they are actually all of those characteristics uh, will be those of the minority. So make sure yeah you go over the problems and yeah you'll get a better idea of this. Um, and then of course the minority carrier lifetime. Okay, so you will have to plug in the values. So 
you don't have dn, right? So dn should be like, okay, let's get the dn. It should be dn over mu n equal to kt over, so kt over e 0 0.0259 times, so you remember kt over e got us the value 0 0.0259 in joules, okay? We know just kt also is 0 0.0259 electron volts, okay? So, so that E is going to get canceled out, you're going to get it in joules. Okay, 0 0.0259 and times mu n. Mu n is 1200. 1200. So 1200 multiplied by 0 0.0259, 31.08, right? 31.08 and the units would be like this is volt per second and the tau is second and centimeters. Okay, just leave the units. We're gonna talk about the units of Ln in the end. So this is going to be 31.08 Zero eight and the times power negative six multiply by one in terms of negative six and then square root the answer five point five seven in terms of negative three. Okay, that is going to be in centimeters, of course. So we are using all the values length in centimeters. So this will be in centimeters. You can always check, okay, LN. Diffusion length for the minority carriers, okay? We are, we have the P-type here. Had it been N-type, we would have uh, solved for LP, okay, if it, this is N, um, like N-type, so again, Make sure you understand those things. Okay, now this thing is going to be at like n naught is, is two in ten to the power fourteen. You already given with that value two in ten to the power fourteen exponential minus e minus x over ln. Ln is five point five seven. Sorry. Five seven times power negative three. Okay. So yeah, and the units are again the concentration is the concentration is a per centimeter cube. So you got this thing right. They ask for determine the steady state excess electron and hole concentration for distance into the um, semiconductor. Of course the um, for holes, it's gonna be the same, okay? It's just gonna follow the characteristics of the minority carriers. So this is also this one. You're gonna use the formula for the minority carriers, and then you will say like, okay, for the majority carriers, it's also going to be the same because they will have the same, okay? Um, are you okay with this one? This is very important. Even you're gonna see your book, you will see these formulas, okay? You only need to understand when and how to use those formulas, okay? This is already developed formula for the steady state concentration of uh, the minority carriers, okay? And if you want to derive it, go back, see that original equation in bipolar transport, put the conditions, uh, steady state and those things, just get the answer, you're gonna get this thing, okay? But yeah, you, you may directly use this one if you know it. Okay, and now what next? They say calculate the steady state electron and hole diffusion current density as a function of distance. Okay, now for this one, okay, that was A part. Diffusion current density. So better to get the holes because we know the majority carriers, they will follow that um, for the minority carriers. So get them for the minority carriers, okay? So again, the formula, dn and 
this thing. Okay. Okay. We know that this one here in terms of x, okay? So we can simply take the derivative. Let me see. Okay. And bipolar transport. Yeah, it's okay. So just plugging in the value here, but for the derivative part, it's gonna be like this one as it is, minus x or ln, and then minus one or ln, multiplied by that thing, right? So I will try to do it together, e, d, n. When I take the derivative, of course, this will be simply out of that thing. And e to the power minus x over ln, and minus one over ln, right? Something like this is L. Hmm. So is there anything we took the derivative, right? There's nothing wrong there, fantastic. So now you just have to plug in the values. You have the value of, for E, you have the value for ln, dn, you already got dn, right? This one, you got it in the top. Uh, this is already given. This is like concentration, excess carry concentration at x is equal to zero, okay? That, that is given, I believe. Yeah, it's just given here. Okay. So you just plug in the value. And minus x over ln, so plug in the value for ln, and you're gonna keep x as it is because it will give you like, uh, the steady state uh, electronic hole diffusion print density as a function of distance, okay? So this is gonna be the same thing. Now, when you're gonna get the, for the holes, it will be the same as this one, except there will be one negative sign. If, if you go back and see the uh, formula for the diffusion current densities, they were exactly same, except there was one negative sign here, okay? So you, you can keep the same value here, just, negative sign here, okay? Which means like this negative, this negative will actually become plus, okay? So I'm gonna actually put that thing here, negative E over Ln and dot, 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 okay? I will try to complete this before uploading it. So yeah, you understand it. So yeah, that's how you're gonna solve it. Well, um, this is a good question in a way that um, some teachers, they like to, put at least one question with a figure. So yeah, uh, it's good to uh, practice these sort of questions as well. Have you got any question? Please go ahead and ask. Otherwise we will move on to next question. And your book telling me that this is difficult question, okay? With the steric thing. Okay, now what do we have here? Does it consider the n-type semiconductor? Fine, shown in this. Illumination produces a constant excess carrier generation rate, G naught in the region, this one. Keep in mind, this excess carrier generation rate is only in this region. The excess carriers are being produced only in this region, okay? So for the other regions, we're like shaded, I don't know, like dark shaded regions. It should be, of course, zero. Keep that thing in mind. Assume that the minority carrier lifetime is in. Infinite, okay, the minority carrier lifetime is infinite. That means the term with that recombination thing that will blow to zero, yeah? If you remember the M bipolar transport equation. And I think I can bring that equation here in case we need it. And I believe we need that. These are the two, of course. Okay, um, I have one question and I believe like someone can actually answer this. Of course, these are the two equations. Which one I should be using? This is n-type, okay? This is n-type. So which one should I be using? I think who's going to answer this one? Maybe Kauser, can you answer this question? Like um, 
the second one because this is this, this is an entire um, mm -hmm. thing. Yeah, so so we should be interested in like the minority carrier characteristics. Well yes. done, thank you. Okay, well done. So yeah, so we will be using this one and the um there are three different regions. One is like from negative L to L, this light shaded, and then the two dark shaded regions on right and left from L to 3L and from negative L to negative 3L, okay? This generation rate is only for the region where you see that il illumination, okay? So for the other regions, that generation rate will be zero. And uh, the carrier lifetime to be infinite means like this thing blows to zero, okay? Keep that thing in mind. Okay, and for different regions, of course, uh, we will see like how we uh, use this one. And assume that the excess minority carry whole concentration at is zero at x negative 3L and x plus 3L. Okay, so from here and here is zero. Sort of a boundary condition. Find the steady state excess minority carrier concentration. Steady state means like this thing will blow to zero, right? Okay. Find the steady state excess minority carrier concentration versus x. Okay, in terms of x. For the case of low injection, okay. Zero applied electric field. This thing blows to zero. So they are so nice, right? They are helping us to eliminate most of the terms. So let's see how we can solve it. So before you actually dive into solving the equation, you must understand what are the things given, what are the constraints given, and how they're going to impact you, that, that equation. Okay, that's the key part. Otherwise, you'll get confused with all these terms. Okay, so. Well, because it's n type, so we're gonna go with this one. And although, like, we have already mentioned something like here for the minority carriers, something. Okay. So now that means uh, I can write down this thing as DP partial square okay, excess carrier. This is zero plus G prime. That's the only thing we have is equal to zero, right? Okay. And if I have to solve it, I'm going to directly do that here, okay? So I'm going to move this to the other side. All right, something like here. And of course, I'm going to move that DP on the other side because I have to solve it for the excess carrier concentration, okay? So it's gonna be like this. Now, it's a differential equation and you guys are really good at solving those differential equations. So if I just integrate it once, I know that I will be left with partial by partial X. I'm integrating it once, okay? This thing and minus G prime over dp, this is, and with x, plus there will be some constant. You may call it like a1, let's say, okay. Uh, maybe like, rather than using a, some other constant. Let's say c, there's nothing with a for mp or c, no problem. Let's use C1, okay? Now, there's something you see, the generation rate. They said it is equal to this thing, okay? So the constant generation rate produces a constant. So just replace this one. So I'm gonna do that directly here. So better to watch the video when you see this document. So is it G naught? Not prime. Okay. It's just a constant. No problem. The negative sign is still there. Okay. Now I can write it down as g prime is equal to this given. Okay. Now let's do integration again. Once again. So to get that a p. So delta p should be negative. G naught prime over 
this diffusion coefficient for the poles. Um, for x, it's going to be x squared by 2, right? The integration. Plus c1, x, right? Plus another constant because there are no limits given. So I will be adding the constants. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We got this thing. Okay, now, this is the case when, when we are talking about like from negative L to L, okay? That's why I'm using that G is equal to G naught something. So this whole thing is being done for this one, this region, okay? From negative L to L because that's the region where they say like the generation rate is constant is this. For other regions, you will see there is no generation rate, nothing being generated there. Okay, um, then what else? Let's use a different color then. And now from the region, the other two regions. So for the other two regions, let's do it like, this is going to be from L to 3L and the other one, negative L to negative 3L, okay? Now for this one, this is already zero, right? The generation, I, I can do it here. This is zero, okay? And if I take the derivative ones, I will have, of course, one constant. So I'm gonna directly do that just to save some time. So E, should be equal to, you can use, uh, okay, no problem. Let's uh, use C1, we use C2 and C3. Okay, this thing. And if you do that once more, you will end up with this thing equals to C3x plus C4. This is the case when the region from negative L, sorry, why I'm doing negative L. It's plus L to three L. I'll do the same thing from negative L to negative three L, of course. So. Again, here, you know, there is no generation. So I can simply copy the this one it will exactly be similar so the equation i will get just different constants of course c 5x plus c6 okay because it's essentially the same equation okay because in both regions the generation rate is okay that thing I can just give me a minute. I have to stop this. Close it. Open it. Okay, now we have this one. Okay, now we got those um, three equations. These two, they're pretty similar. This one is a little different as you have like this thing over there, right? So what I can do is that I can take this screenshot.
Okay, now let's see what are the conditions given. Assume the assume that the excess minority carrier hole concentration is zero. Here, here. So delta p equal to zero here, delta p equal to zero here. Okay, that's what you're given with. Okay. And what else? The excess minority carrier hole concentration is zero as this. Find the steady state excess minority carrier concentration versus uh, this one. Problem, find the steady state excess minority carrier concentration for the case of injection for zero blind field. Nation produces constant excess carrier generation period in this one. Okay, so now you can see like it's zero here. And of course it's non-zero here. So for continuity, we will have to like, uh, there will be continuity here at uh, this one. And of course this one, okay. So that means uh, we can do that continuity thing here. And the first derivative should also be continuous, right? So what we can actually do is that, So, it's going to be negative three M and at this way, right? Okay. And then this one, and of course it's first derivative. It should be, it should be continuous at the boundaries, like boundaries of that small region. Okay. So because um, you have zero and so what we can actually do is that we will we have to just plug in the values so if you, you just put uh, at x is equal to negative 3l you put this equal to zero and at x is equal to 3l this is zero so you can use this and this and you will have to solve okay let me actually tell you like what we're actually going to do and then i can complete this for you and i can uh, post this okay. So just to save some time, delta. Oh, sorry. So you have this thing. This thing is for you will use for three L and put this equal to zero delta p the excess carrier concentration for the minority carriers, and you will get x is equal to three L. So three L C three plus C four is equal to zero, and then here negative three LC five plus C six is equal to zero. Fantastic. And then the this thing and this thing will be zero means that X is equal to L and X is equal to negative L. You can put this thing equal to each other. Okay, so you can plug X is equal to negative L, X is equal to L and you have to put it equal, the success carrier, okay? And you can also take the derivative of this one you will get, of course, we will get this thing close to zero and there will be just C1 here. And then, so that means you're gonna get a few equations there, okay? So once you have those equations, do we have to just get Delta P, the excess carrier? Okay, find the static concentration versus X. Okay, so that's what we only need. We, we have to get like for these three different regions, we have to get the excess carrier concentration, mean, which means like we need to know C3, C4, there are six constants and we will have six equations, okay? So just six constants, six equations, that means, yeah, we, we can actually get those constants. You will have to solve it and yeah, you're gonna get the answer, okay? Uh, I will try to solve this one before posting it to the website. And yeah, in case you find any problem there, just uh, uh, email me, okay? In case you have questions.
Uh, if you have any question, just let me know. Otherwise, uh, we can move on to this one. And uh, this is going to be the last question, actually. We are already, it's been more than two hours, yeah. Okay, so if the excess, okay, if the electron concentration varies with, okay, I got this one from that document I was talking about, okay. N of X is equal to this, X greater than zero and L is equal to, so they're already giving us that equation, okay? The one we were using actually before, uh, something like that. In a semiconductor, Gailey Marcin calculate the electron diffusion current density at X is equal to zero if the electron diffusion coefficient is this one. So what do you have to do for this? You will just, uh, uh, you will just uh, use that equation for the diffusion current density. It was E, D, N, um, derivative, something like, uh, I can actually bring that equation here. Sorry. We use that somewhere over here. Something like this, right? This is actually what we find. Let's get the original proof. Uh, I'm to this. Just uh, give me a minute. Let me stop this and okay. So Yeah, I can take this. It's going to be the similar expression. And that's problem. Yeah. So something like this. So we have to Electron concentration varies. Okay, this is this fine. The electron diffusion current density, so it should be like I clearly stating this to be this thing would be okay. Now you have uh, and so you want to take the derivative of that. So that means now E D and and the derivative of that thing would be 10 to the power 16 as it is, e to the power negative x over l and minus one over l, okay? Now, this say you have to get at x is equal to zero. So at x is equal to zero, you just plug x is equal to zero. So 1.6 in 10 to the power negative 19 and multiply by dn, you have that value, 220. And 10 to the power 16. You, you're gonna see it's a similar uh, equation that we already have. So e to the power z negative zero. So e to the power of zero, that's just gonna give you one, right? And negative one over L. So one over L, it should be one micrometer. So we just convert that into centimeters. So one in terms of negative four. So yeah, just solve this one. You're gonna get your answer. Okay, so that is going to be the answer to this question. I will complete this before posting it. And the, the other question where we have to solve those uh, boundary, using the boundary conditions, I have already mentioned the boundary conditions, but yeah, like we have to plug in the values and get those constants, six equations, six um, constants. Of course, it's gonna take a little bit of time, but yeah, uh, we can do that. Okay, uh, any questions, anything you wanna ask 
before we end this session. I will put this uh, online on my website so you will be able to see this, okay? So yeah, thank you very much. And I hope uh, this helps you. I would be happy if it helps you and you get better grades. Um, okay, can we have the recording of the last uh, tutorial? Yeah, like uh, I will actually, I forgot. I, I'll tell the coordinator and she will actually put it on you can cardio, okay? So thank you guys and I wish you best of luck. And this recording, I will see like if I can put it in on Incacardia or on my own website. But yeah, I have recorded this session. So in case you want to watch it, you can do that. Okay. Same thing for this, right? Yeah, like I will try to put this. I have already recorded it. Maybe I can stop recording this. And so stop share and...